Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can set a maximum size limit for long text fields in your Microsoft Access database. Today's question comes from Chloe in Eugene, Oregon, one of my Platinum members. Is it Oregon or Oregon? How do you guys pronounce it? Let me know. Chloe says, my company prepares insurance claims. We have to submit a form to the insurance company outlining the details of a claim. However, they have a maximum of 100 characters. Is there any way to set a max limit on long text fields like you can with short text? Well, Chloe, I've never been asked this before. It's a very good question. And yes, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. One's really easy, but it doesn't give you very many options. The second way is a little bit better and gives you some more options. And then in the extended cut, I'll even show you how you can put a little count down here. And as the user's typing, it'll update that count and then even warn you when you only got so many characters left. We'll do that in the extended cut. But first, I'll show you a couple simple ways just to limit the number of characters that are entered. Now, before we get started, if you don't know what validation rules are, go watch this video. I'll put a link to it down below. You can click on it and go watch this one. And also go watch my string functions video. We need this to tell how long, how many characters are in a text string, a text field. All right, so if you don't know how to use the length, L-E-N function, go watch this too and then come on back. Okay, so this is my Tech Help free template. You can download a copy of this database off my website if you want to, but this will work pretty much any database that you want. So let's say I got a customer form here, and in this long text field, this notes field, right, I can only put a max of 1,000 characters. Now, if you go to the table properties over here, design view, for our short text fields like first name, we can set a field size down here. And pretty much the only reason you'd use that field size nowadays is to limit the amount of data that this text field can hold. So if you only want it to hold a maximum of 10 characters, put a 10 in there. But if you look at long text fields like notes, there is no field size. So what you can do instead of using field size is you can use the validation rule property. So I want you to go watch that validation rule video, right? And the validation rule says when this record is entered, check and make sure that whatever's in this field meets whatever criteria we set. So what's the criteria we're going to set here? Well, we're going to say that the notes field has to be less than, let's make it 10 characters for now just to keep it simple. Okay. So I'm going to say, and I'm going to zoom in for you so you can see this better. Shift F2. I'm going to say the length of notes, now be careful, the length of notes has to be less than 10. Okay. Yeah, you change it to 1,000 for later, but for now, we'll just keep it 10. Now, be careful. Watch what happens. And I'm, I'm making this mistake because I make it all the time, and I know you guys are going to make it, and this is one of those things that people always ask me. Why isn't it working? All right, hit OK, and look what happened. Can you see it? Let me zoom in again so you can see it clearly. Watch what happened. Shift F2. Look at that. You see what happened? Access changed it just slightly. It put notes inside of quotes. Okay, this is a common thing that happens. Okay. In this particular case, you want to make sure you put notes inside of brackets. We don't want the actual word notes there. I want the notes field. Okay, and I usually say you only have to put those brackets around field names if you use spaces or weird characters, right? But once in a while, you got to know to put those brackets in there because Access sometimes tries to change your functions for you. It's trying to be helpful, but in this case, it's not. All right, so hit OK. There you go. Now, the validation text can be whatever you want to see. I'm going to turn this property sheet off here real quick. Okay. Validation text is, uh, you know, you entered too many characters or whatever. You can be more helpful than that if you want to. Now, save that. It's going to say the data integrity rules have changed. Okay, fine. And I'm going to hit cancel, which means it's just going to ignore whatever's in the table. We covered that in the other video, right? All right. So close this. Come over here to the customer form. Okay. Now, if I put in one, two, three, four, five characters... Everything's fine. Okay. Now, here's the interesting thing about val the validation rule property is that it doesn't actually check that until you leave the record or close the form. This is one of the reasons why I find the validation rule a, a little annoying because I got more than 10 characters there, right? And it's not going to catch that. I could go and do more stuff, right? 
and it's not going to catch that until you either leave the record or close the form. And now it says you entered too many characters. Oh, okay. You should be a little better here with the, the rule, maybe say, uh, you know, your notes field is too long or something like that. But still, that's kind of annoying. All right, do you want to close the database? No, no, stop. Don't do anything, right? Okay, can we come back in here and change this? Okay, and now it lets me do it. So as you can see, that's, that's okay. That's one way you could do it. But again, you got to wait until, you know, you leave the record or you close the form. And that's just, that's, that's annoying. I don't like validation rule for that particular instance. It's good for some things, but not this. I want to, I want to message right away as soon as the user tries, you know, to leave that field. So how can we do that? Well, let's go get rid of that validation rule first of all. Where are you? Come here. Get out of here. Delete. Delete. Okay. Now, for this next step, so, that, so that'll work for you. If you don't want to do any programming or whatever, that, that's, that'll work, okay? Not my favorite solution, but it'll work. Now, for this next thing, we need a couple of lines of code. Don't let VBA scare you. If you've never done any programming before, go watch this. It's my intro to VBA. It's free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you all the basics, okay? So go watch this, then come on back. Oh, and then go watch this one after update. What we're going to do is we're going to use an event called before update, which is slightly different from after update, but after update's easier to master first. So go watch this after you watch intro to VBA. All right. Watch the after update and DLOOKUP video. This is a really good video. One of my, one of my favorite ones. Then come on back. Okay. So you watched VBA and you watched after update. So now what we could do is, okay. After this is updated, we can run the after update event and tell how many characters are in there. Let's, let's see how that works. Okay, design view. Go into the notes property here. Go to the event tab. Go to after update. Dot, dot, dot. That'll bring up our code builder, right? Okay. Now, in the after update event, just, just to see what's in there, okay? Let's say message box, and then we'll say uh, there are, and then how many characters? The length of notes and characters okay that's in the after update event so after that's updated i want to see how many characters there are save that control s come back over here let's close it down open it up okay and let's type in a couple more things here i'm gonna go one two three four five and then hit tab boom all right there are five characters good golden okay uh six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve let's see what we got now Okay, there are 12 characters. Very good. Now, that's after update. Okay? The problem with after update is by the time after update runs, it's too late to change things. Okay? Yeah, you can undo that. No, but no that's too much work. What you want is an event that runs before that change is committed. Okay? So Access can look at that value and go, oh, wait a minute. You got too many characters here. Or, you know, wait a minute. This value is too low or whatever. Okay. That's what the before update does. After update is after you make the change. All right. It's too late. It's being saved. But before update happens before that change is committed to the table. Okay. So let me hit escape here. Go undirty. There we go. Let's go back to our code here. Let's get rid of this after update. Okay. And let's go back here. Yeah. You can get to this from going right in the code window, but I don't like to confuse people. All right, you guys are just learning this stuff. All right, so go to events, go to before update this time. All right, dot, dot, dot. Now we're in the notes before update. Now look right here. This is one of the major differences between after update and before update. Before update can be canceled. Okay, so you can say, oh, this, this doesn't meet my criteria. Cancel it. Okay, so right in here, we're going to say a little if then. If you've never written an if-then statement before, go watch this. I'll put a link to this down below, too. Okay. We're going to say if the length of notes is greater than 10, we'll say for now, then, all right, cancel equals true, and then a message box, right? You entered too many characters. And then end if. Okay. There's no reason to do an exit sub or any other stuff in there. It's going to check this, all right? If you've typed in uh, more than 10 characters, it'll cancel the event, give you a message box, exit out, and then it'll leave you sitting there in that field 
and you can't leave it until you either fix this or hit escape to cancel it. Okay, so back here, again, close everything. Always close everything down. Save changes, yes. All right, open it back up again. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five in there. I'll hit tab. Everything's golden. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Tab, you enter too many characters. See, right away, immediately. Hit okay. All right, maybe put a couple more in, All right? Tab, oh, too many. And you can put the count in there too. You entered five too many characters, whatever you want to do, right? All right, but I got to back it up now to like maybe seven, hit tab, and now I'm good. The alternative is if you got too many in here, you can hit tab. And if you don't want to fix that, you can just hit escape and it goes back to where it was. It basically cancels it, okay? So there you go. There's the simple method with a validation rule. There's the better method with the before update event. And now in the extended cut for the members, we're going to do a whole other thing. We're going to go to a whole other level. We're going to make a box down here that's got an active count as you type, right? And if you get close to being almost too many characters, it'll give you a warning. And if you go over, it'll give you a warning. It'll still let you type because I find that annoying like on some... On some web forms on the internet, right? You're typing, you're typing, you're typing, and it hits a max, and then it just stops. I think that's annoying. So sometimes I want to finish my thought and then go back and edit it, maybe maybe abbreviate some other words or take some spacing out somewhere else. So we're going to let the user type and then just say, hey, you're over by 12 characters. Go into the, your text somewhere and find 12 characters to get rid of, right? Right? Here's my database that I built, right? So I'll come in here, start typing, blah, 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 blah. I only got seven characters left, and now oh, we're over. Say as I'm typing, all right, I got to go back. I got to get rid of something. I uh, still nine characters. I come down here, maybe find something else. Get rid of that. Okay. And oh, there we go. Okay. And one thing I just noticed, if you got one extra character, you're over by zero characters. <laughs> I'm going to fix that. We'll fix that in the extended cut. All right. We'll make it say if it's zero. So it'll say perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay. I fix it. Ready? Here we go. Da, 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 da. There you go. You have exactly a thousand characters. And if you type more, oh, you're over. Now, now it's working good. Okay. Now we can do this in the extended cut. So if you want to see how that works, sign up now. Join now if you're not a member already. It's what? Six bucks a month, folks. It's like the cost of a Starbucks. And I love me some Starbucks. You can send me some Starbucks if you want. No. <laughs> so that's covering the extended cut. We're going to do a text box showing the live count, a warning when it gets low. Okay. Um, we're going to learn a bunch of new stuff that I haven't covered. Um, I don't think I've covered these in extended cut videos before. I've covered these in my developer courses. All right. There's a text property of text boxes that we have to learn. All right. This seems like it's really easy folks, but there's like five or six different weird events that happen as you type. Okay. There's uh, we're going to have to learn about something called the old value property, the value that a box used to have in it. All right, then we're going to do the on change event and the undo events. Because what happens when the user hits escape? Some weird stuff happens. Okay, this is all covered in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's a lot of them now. I don't even know how many. I, I lost count. Gold members can download these databases. And you get access to the code vault. And platinum members, well, you platinum members are my best friends. So... You know, we have, uh, we have tea every other Sunday. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, check it out. And, of course, if you have any questions, post them down below in the comments section. And we'll see you next time. Hope you learned something today. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name 
listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.